Welcome to this in-depth tutorial on creating a cinematic first-person camera in Unreal Engine. Today we'll transform the basic first-person view into a dynamic, cinematically focused experience using depth of field and proper character visualization. We'll cover why the third person template provides a better foundation than the default first person setup, implement some smooth walking mechanics, and create an advanced depth of field system that responds to your environment. Whether you're developing a narrative driven game or creating architectural visualizations, this camera setup will elevate your project's visual quality. And if you want to see the project that we're using, the environment, if you want to see it in action, head on over to Patreon as it is available there to download in beta version. Now I'm showcasing this World Forge environment from a first person camera perspective. Looking at our world settings, you'll see I've already configured the first person blueprint as the playable pawn in our game mode. Let me demonstrate this by pressing play in the viewport. When looking down, you'll notice we have no visible feet. That's because this default character lacks a body. As you can see, we can fully navigate using WSD controls and freely looking around with the camera. The first person character only includes two arms, which aren't particularly useful without holding a weapon. As we move through the scene, you can observe the nanite displacement at work, delivering crisp detail. However, our camera currently lacks cinematic effects like depth of field, enhanced lighting, and dynamic movement responses to the terrain features like slopes and sudden elevation changes. This environment does not have any meshes on it, consisting only of the nanite tessellated terrain itself and some foliage. Everything you are seeing is generated entirely through the material shader. While you might be tempted to use the first person system that comes with Unreal Engine to create a first person cinematic camera, we're going to take a different approach. The key to creating a proper first person camera actually lies in the third person system. Go to the add button in your content browser, then select add feature or content pack. In the new window, choose the first person option. I know this seems counterintuitive, but trust me, the first person template will give us the most accurate foundation for a proper first person camera, as you'll see when we complete the setup. Navigate to the third person folder, then to the blueprint folder, where you'll find the third person character blueprint. You have two options for implementing this. Either set it as your default pawn class in the world settings or project settings by dragging it over, or set up a game override. Now let's open the blueprint. It's quite straightforward and with just a few modifications you'll have a proper first person camera ready to go. Now inside the blueprint editor, let's set up our walking mechanics. Right click and search for the shift, or the left key, the shift left key, or choose another key that isn't already mapped to WSD or space. Once placed, connect it to a flip-flop node using the pressed option, allowing us to toggle between two states. For state A, search for set max walking speed. You'll need to uncheck the context sensitive box to find it. Duplicate this node for state B. Now grab the character movement component by holding control and dragging it into the blueprint. Connect it as the target for both speed nodes. Set the walking speed to 200 and running speed to 400. After compiling, ensure your game mode override is set to third person and verify you're using the blueprint we just modified. When you press play, you'll still be in third person view, but pressing shift will now toggle between walking and running speeds. Notice how the mannequin smoothly transitions between these animations based on the shift keys state. Now let us return to the blueprint to set our, up our first person camera with proper depth of field. First, create some working space, then add a custom event named update focal distance. This will control our camera's focal point. Now, looking at the existing camera in the third person character blueprint, we'll need to reposition it for the first person view. So we start off by deleting both the default camera and the camera boom. Add a cinematic camera component and make it a child of the character mesh. Pick up 
parented to the head socket, you'll see it floating near the character when you do this. For positioning, reset the location of the camera so it's right at the head of your character. Keep the Z rotation at 90 degrees, but adjust the X rotation to 270. Set both X and Y location values to a number of 10. Now change the film settings from digital to 16x9 DSLR with a 30mm prime lens. Set the aperture to f4 for a mo moodier look with less light ent entering the sensor. Now enable use pawn control rotation on the camera and then select the top of the blueprint and enable use controller rotation yaw. Now this, you know, to ensure the proper camera and character control. Testing now you know, shows that we're using the cinematic camera with letterbox bars that you can disable if you'd like. You can see the character's arms and legs and notice you know, the enhanced camera movement with realistic jitter. While the cinematic camera includes some basic depth of field for close objects, we can improve this with dynamic adjustments. So you know, let's head back to the viewport for these enhancements that we just talked about. Now in the blueprint editor, search for line trace by channel and connect it to our custom event. Now this will trace from the camera to nearby objects for focal distance calculation. When dragging our camera into the blueprint editor uh, and searching for, you know, get world location, you'll notice it doesn't show the correct node initially. To fix this, drag the camera again, but this time enable the context sensitive checkbox that we disabled previously when setting up our uh, for, you know, first person camera. This will give us the proper world location node. Delete any incorrect nodes from previous attempts. We'll also have to get the camera's forward vector and create an add, you know, an add operation, a plus operation. Connect the world location to both the line traces start and the add operations first pin with the forward vector going to the second pin add a multiply node for the forward vector then convert it to float with a value of about 10,000 connect this to the add operation Create a flow variable named focal distance and hold alt and left click to drag it into, into the blueprint in order for us to set it. Connect the line trace to this new set node. Add the break hit result node, expand it and connect the line traces out hit um, to it. Create the subtract operation. Connect the location to the top, uh, to the top pin and world location to the bottom. From the subtract pin, get the vector length then add a divide node and set that to 4 for depth of field intensity. Add the select flow to calculate between the divided vector length and break hit results, setting B to a large value, you know, for when you're looking at the sky and things like that. Connect this to the focal distance. Now from the camera, so let's just drag in another camera, add the set, of, set focus settings and make camera focus settings. Let's connect the focal distance to manual focus distance, then to set focus settings. I know this is a bit confusing, but you know, set focus smoothing to 15 um, milliseconds and enable smooth focus change for gradual transitions. Now this entire system needs to run in a loop for continuous focal distance updates. Okay, now let's complete the setup by adding a timer. Add a set timer by event and connect it to our custom event, setting the interval to 0 
and enabling it to loop. Create a sequence from the event, begin play, and connect it to the timers you initiated. Now, testing in the viewport shows our dynamic depth of field in action. The focal point adjusts based uh, on where you're looking, and using the screen center as the line trace point, uh, you know, you can kind of realize where the focal point will be. Note that instance foliage may not interact perfectly with the line traces, but the system works well with 3D models like rocks and landscape features. This setup creates a cinematic experience as you explore the environment. Objects blur naturally as you approach them, adding a depth to the scene presentation. Even in an unbuilt level, the effect is quite compelling, though there might be occasional depth of field glitches, such as, you know, sparking surfaces and stuff like that. The key advantage over the basic first-person setup is seeing your character's full mesh as you move, rather than just the typical glitchy floating arms. This foundation can be further enhanced to improve scene presentation, camera feel, and character interaction. Now let me demonstrate with some cubes in the scene. When objects are very close to the camera, they become blurred, while distant objects remain sharp when directly viewed. Everything else is naturally, you know, fades with the cinematic depth of field. This isn't the basic Gaussian blur you'd seen on a mobile platform either, but, you know, it's actually a high-quality effect. And there you have the final result. Now I want to thank my amazing community, especially my Patreon and supporters and YouTube viewers and members for your continuous encouragement and feedback. If you're interested in exploring the World Forge environment we used in this tutorial, it's available in beta on my Patreon page. Your support through project purchases helps me create more content like this. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next tutorial. Keep creating.